Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and in this video I want to talk about wind turbines. Now that wind turbines have achieved a critical mass in the UK, the cost of manufacturing them, of installing them and maintaining them has been dramatically reduced and it means that wind turbines can now enter into profitability a lot sooner, maybe as little as five years before they're washing their own face. So in turn that means that the government's sub subsidies which come from our electricity bills can be reduced or even eliminated altogether. It is time for wind turbines to stand on their own, well, one foot. Actually that isn't quite true because when the wind blows too hard they switch certain wind turbines off to prevent overloading the grid. And similarly when the wind isn't blowing at all you get a situation where you have to bring in some kind of backup. Now when you own wind turbines that isn't necessarily good news for you if there are times when you can't be paid for producing electricity you're just sitting on your hands. So the government has had this scheme in the past where they will actually pay you for not producing electricity as if you were producing electricity. So it's a win-win. But again, because wind turbines are entering into a new phase, those subsidies, those guarantees of income will be withdrawn. Now, if you're an investor in wind turbines, that's not a good situation. What you actually want is certainty. And the way to achieve certainty is to get wind insurance. Yep, you're going to be betting on the wind. In other words, when the wind doesn't blow, the insurance company will pick up the tab. And when the wind blows too hard, the insurance company will pick up the tab, which is not to be cheap obviously so that means that that price will be loaded onto the electricity bill. In other words we're gambling on the wind. But of course this is nothing new, all insurance is gambling in a way and when you've got flood insurance you're betting on the rain so what's different about betting on the wind? Now this is really betting on an act of God. Don't worry if you don't believe in God because praying doesn't necessarily help and you won't get a discount if you're a devout believer. Now how do you come up with a premium for wind insurance? I mean what insurance companies historically would do is they would look at past figures and they would try and work out the likelihood of the future based upon the past but as we know that doesn't necessarily work. They tell you all the time in investments that past performance is no guarantee of future performance. In a way you just have to lick your finger, stick it in the wind and decide what you're going to charge. Now in 2021 we had a wind drought in Europe for about three months of the summer the wind hardly blew at all. And you may not have noticed and that would be because you're presumably not an investor in wind power. But for those people who do earn their money from the wind those three months were a bit of a problem. Now we've still got to have electricity and we didn't get power cuts during that summer so where does that electricity come from? Now to some extent in the summer we're using less electricity and this is one of the reasons why the government is quite key not to encourage people to put in air conditioning in their homes but to do it passively. Now if you're getting a wind drought in the summer it usually coincides with high pressure which means you're getting lots of lovely sunshine. So if you've got solar panels it may be that the solar panels are picking up the shortfall from the wind. Now that isn't necessarily true because we don't quite have enough solar panels to pick up that shortfall and you can see that we're kind of doubling up. And of course the other problem is at night time you don't get an awful lot out of a solar panel. Like it or not at some point you've got to go back to your old friend the gas fired power station and ask them to come in and pick up the shortfall. The wind isn't blowing, the sun's gone in, fire up the gas fired power stations boys. Now the people who own the gas fired power stations, the investors in that are going to say hang on a minute you expect us to hang around all the time you've got wind and sunshine you're perfectly happy you don't need us so we've just got to sit around maintaining this huge investment just for the odd times when you need some extra power. So once again they are going to need paying for not producing electricity, for just being on standby for when they need them. That's entirely reasonable. So in order to pursue this goal of net zero or even just become energy self-sufficient we have to have a diverse range of different ways of making electricity. 
So, you know, the real problem is not really producing electricity, but it's storing electricity. And we need to find a cheap and effective way of storing vast amounts of electricity. Batteries just aren't going to do it. They may be OK on a domestic basis, but really as a national grid solution, they're a non-starter. Now, when I've talked about hydrogen in the past, a lot of people have derided me saying it's ridiculously expensive to produce hydrogen. If you're going to produce green hydrogen, you need vast amounts of electricity. And that's the very point when you've got vast vast amounts of electricity when you're turning off wind turbines or you're not using solar panels all the rest of it you could be producing hydrogen even though it's not a particularly efficient way of using electricity but that is a store of energy and that hydrogen can then be used during the downtime to create electricity. Now there are other solutions and I've always been a fan of tidal power. The Swansea Tidal Lagoon which has never been built I think is an absolute tragedy. I think it would have been a fantastic investment and it would have brought much needed jobs to South Wales especially as they're closing the Port Talbot Steelworks. Now none of these things are quick fixes but I think that we need a more joined up thinking because if we push forward with one kind of technology such as wind turbines and solar panels without thinking about what we're going to do during the shortfall we're really not achieving an effective solution in fact all we're doing is whistling in the wind I'm Roger Bisbee come back and see me soon I'll have more to rent and let me know what you think <laughs>